classic featuring your main man, Tony the Sugar Baggy. Hello, everybody. It's me, Tony the Sugar Baggy. I wish behind me was like a huge beach with some palm trees, and I'm just like sitting back and we're talking music. You guys are joining me on the beach. Could be as many or as little as there could be to uh, fit the fill that beach. But uh, we got a lot of fun stuff here tonight. A lot of fun stuff to join in on the musical conversation on episode 72. Uh, can't believe it, 72. I, every week I say I can't believe it because I can't believe we're at another episode. I love doing the show and I love sharing and talking music with you guys all week in one form or another on one platform live here there i just got back from a, a carnival not mere seconds ago where the band uh finished up with a little home sweet home by motley crew of course what do you think i do i sit there out there and i go wow that's pretty awesome so again i find that to be very very cool and i'm glad just that we're here tonight and we're able to jam so let's uh get started here tonight uh first on the docket we got a new band here called babe report uh quite the name not something that i was expecting to talk about tonight but here's a little clip of babe report <laughs> I know it's hard to get a lot out of that little clip right there, but if you go ahead and dig into their brand new album, Did You Get Better? Um, the four piece out of Chicago, uh, definitely you will uh, see that you're going to be getting into a mixture of uh, sounds and heaviness. And uh, some of it, I feel a little, uh, so some, some lot of different bands, um, a lot of 90s inspired bands. There's a little, I hear a little Sonic Youth. I hear a lot of other stuff too. Not uh, I, that was just a band that uh, you can you can maybe kind of say okay, they're kind of like that, but uh, really kind of cool how uh, this Chicago uh, scene has been uh, pumping out some new bands lately that we've been talking about. Um, again, uh, did you get better? Is actually really awesome, and it was sent to me by a guest from a couple of shows ago uh mike michael if you uh want to thank him for sharing this album uh babe report because uh and band all together because honestly uh was not in the running to even know who who these who who these guys were um and me one of my favorite animals ever are turtles and the first track on the album is called turtle of reaper so uh dig into these guys um wasn't had didn't have them on um my bingo card you know throughout the album there might be a little some uh some jane's addiction uh sounds um just a lot of different different stuff um but uh what i liked was that uh did not see this coming and i'm saying to myself it's june i need some new bands and then all of a sudden you know a band called uh babe report is uh dropped on my lap and it's Crazy because again, this is another name that will fit in with the Grizzly Bears. That's a band name that you uh, you might not be familiar with. Um, the Go to Beds. That's another classic name. The Dilly Dally. There's just a lot of names out there, but uh, Babe Report is just one that's going to stick in my head and going to keep digging into this album. So I suggest you do too. Uh, Did you get better? Is the name of that album? So uh, do me a favor and dig into that and uh, let us know uh, what you think. Um, also, if you are not familiar with one Ray LaMontagne, um, this gentleman's got a new album coming out, which, again, um, every time anyone's got a new album out, I, I like to put my ear, because even if it's one we're not really into, um, we're still going to give them a little bit of a listen. Um, but uh, that being said, his last album, uh, Mono Vision, was, was really, really, really... Um, I thought it was a solid, solid effort. And if you keep going back through some of his other work, you're not going to be disappointed with an artist that uh, has, well, been putting out uh, work since 1999. Okay, so when you're you're, you're telling yourself here, okay, we're going to get a new album, and 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 a new album it is, is in which we're going to get, which I'm pretty excited, you know, because anytime an artist in which I enjoy like Raymond Lantain, uh comes out with Ray LaMontagne. I love saying his name. It's a real cool name that uh, slides right off your tongue. Uh, a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And 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 
what's cool too is he's got some pretty good producers on some of his albums. He's had uh, everybody from uh, Dan Arabach of the Black Keys, who we just talked about last week, um, being a little too big for their britches, playing arenas. Uh, even my morning jackets, Jim James, has gotten involved. Uh, the new album is going to be called Long Way Home. I'm going to be really interesting to hear that. Unfortunately, we got to wait all the way to August 16th. Okay, it wasn't something uh, I was thinking. I was hoping it was going to come out a little bit sooner. But uh, first track dropped yesterday, Step Into Your Power. Go out and check that out. It's going to give you these, these summer vibes that you're really going to say, oh, okay, I, I like summer vibes. I like, I need to get out and uh, get some of these summer vibes in. Um, and speaking of summer vibes, you know, let's go out there and support some local clubs, okay? Uh, I always like to pick up a little bit of a flyer just to let me know who's coming into town. And Reggie's has got some really awesome shows starting this June 7th. We got Wookie Foot, okay? Um, a lot of awesome stuff. June 8th at the Rock Club, there's going to be a Warped Tour 24, like a kind of a, a preview, okay? Of course, none of these bands will be there, but if you're a fan of Weezer and, and, and Green Day and Blink-182, they're going to have some 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 local uh, cover bands coming through there. Mindsight, June 14th, um, is going to be coming into town. Um, August 10th, you know, right before that, uh, Ray LaMontagne album, a little band called Fear with Lee Ving. Lee Ving, uh, Mr. Clue uh, is was part of Fear. A um, lot, a lot of cool stuff here. Mr. Blotto, um, Sham 69, going to be there June 22nd. That Mr. Blotto is going to be, uh, well, he's there every Tuesday. So, again, just something a little bit, if you happen to be in the area of Reggie's, um, always putting on local shows and local awesomeness for people to, to, to tap and to check out. I need to get out there. I need to get out to Shubas. We're seeing a lot of shows coming through Shubas that uh, definitely would like to check out. Hopefully, I won't just stand in the back and keep repeating and going, Shubas, Shubas, Shubas. But uh, definitely uh, check that out because uh, it's always smooth when we check out really cool things. Um, so uh, do that. And uh, tonight we're going to get started a little bit by going through this track here by Edwin Collins. If you're not familiar with the track, um, I always like to give you guys a little bit of a head start on what I'm going to be talking about. But here it is right here. Edwin Collins, okay, born in 1959. He was originally the lead singers in the 1980s post-punk band Orange Juice. But uh, tonight we're here to talk about a, a girl like you. Um, for me, uh, this this has appeared in um, um, it, it is, is Empire Records is where I, I originally heard this song. So I always, as soon as I hear the song, Empire Records, which is a great movie. If you have uh, not checked into it, uh, do that. Um, because Edwin Collins is, is 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 on that with this great track. But uh the song um described by Collins is about a, a mystical girl. Okay. Um I think it's pretty cool because I did not know this before doing research, but Paul Cook, if you're not familiar with, is the drummer of the Sex Pistols. He lays down that cool uh, drum line that you hear there right there at the beginning, which is uh to me, every time I hear this song, it kind of gives me these kick off the summer vibes. Um, it's a really good, smooth, easy track. Um, like the lyrics of it. It kind of reminds me of a song that um, seems to be a long time ago. Um, some people compared it that they heard a little David Bowie in it. Um, but Edwin Collins uh, getting to work on this track is just really uh, laying it down. And uh, the drums um, described a little bit of like a Phil Spector-ish sound. Um, song every time it comes on this song is not a song that uh the hookup on um music it never gets old to uh, myself or anyone else that i've ever uh or associates themselves with the show if you don't like the show or you do like the, sh the song so if you don't like the show it's okay if you don't like the show the song if you don't like or the show you can let always let us know but the song um is definitely something that is is great um I think it's a good one, especially if you're like driving down the street with a cool breeze. Um, definitely gives you a little bit of, of a good um, a feeling. Um, what I like too is that uh, it doesn't get old. 
okay? For a song that came out, um, it's going to be in December, honestly, 30 years ago. Can you believe that this song is 30 years old? I can't believe it. I can't believe Empire Records is 30 years old because I remember watching it as an 11 and a 12-year-old right there all the time. But uh, again, go back and be able to check out that. Check out that album. It's uh, it's it's pretty... Uh, it's pretty solid, and I don't really think you're going to be disappointed with that one um, in many ways, shape, or form. Um, next, what we're going to do is we're going to dig into a little bit of a, an artist who you may have heard on some albums, but you may not uh, be too familiar with, and that's uh, Adrian Below. And uh, we were going to dig into a little bit about uh, what he's been a part of it, and a little bit of this is in a little bit of that. But uh, let's hear this from Mr. Adrian. The idea. And um, so in that music, it's free form, and you probably will never do the same thing twice. When it comes to soloing, I'm a, I like to uh, try to go in fresh. Uh, describing right there how he likes to go in fresh to every solo. Um, a lot of times he's a, a progressive jammer. You know, he doesn't like to do the same solos twice. It sounds really awesome. Excellent session musician, guest touring musician, um, been part of uh, King Crimson, which we'll get to in a second, but also getting a start uh, with Frank Zappa and David Bowie and Talking Heads and even playing with Nine Inch Nails. Um, just a really, really awesome a uh, piece of work okay um i like just the idea that this guy can be on you know he played on 79 um cheek your booty from uh frank zappa you know what's hilarious is i've listened to this help him quite a bit for frank and i never quite understood what that meant until uh right now saying it all out cheek your booty aka shake your booty but uh flakes jones crusher city of tiny lights some great um working pretty greatly on that. Uh, he even appeared on the Baby Snake soundtrack uh, with uh, Frank Zappa. But uh, you start to really go through playing on Lodger. Uh, DJ, which I've talked about on this this, this show multiple times, um, excellent guitar work. Um, talking Heads, all over Talking Heads. Remain in Light, all over Remain in Light. Um, go check out the name of this band is Talking Heads, a great live album. Really shows some of his guitar intricacies um what i think is honestly very impressive is his career with one king crimson which recently we talked about discipline on this album <laughs> on this album on this show and uh we've uh stated that he's going back out on tour with some uh, of those king crimson ex-mates you know um a little bit of tony levin a little bit of um you know, was not in King Crimson, but he was in Tool, who was amazing. As Danny Carey will be playing drums. But uh, going back and just I, what I like and the reason I brought up Adrian Bello, Bello tonight is that uh, I don't want any artist to ever sink under the, um, the zeitgeist of being able to listen to who they are. Um, you know, I'm going on into a, a Cindy Lauper album called True Colors. Was un, unfamiliar that Adrian played on that. Um, played on a, a cover, which you're saying to yourself, "Well, what song would he have played on in there?" A cover, "What's Going On," by uh, Marvin Gaye, which I'm thinking in my head of this this, this silly joke that someone uh, posted online about Marvin Gaye not really knowing what's going on because of songs like. What's going on? You know, he's always asking questions in his songs. But uh, Adrian Bello is always uh, putting out answers in his work. And I definitely think that uh, you go back and check it out. Um, you know, he even contributed to Graceland by Paul, Mac by Paul McCartney, by Paul Simon. Um, not, uh, not something that you would expect, you know, playing on The Boy in the Bubble, playing on You Can Call Me Out. Did you know he played on that track? Uh, not too many are familiar that uh, he played on that, but he plays the guitar synthesizer on that, um, which is really, 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 really cool to uh, find that out as doing research for the show. Um, but uh, go back and check out some of his work. Definitely awesome. Um, definitely really cool. Um, also definitely really awesome. And I'm sure you, I don't know if you listen to him too much, is the beta band. Nobody cares. The beta band. 
some people got their uh what's the word i'm looking for um got their start hearing of them in high fidelity a uh, big scene in that movie if you have not checked it out um that uh mentions the beta band so it was cool to get a little bit of uh of uh <clears throat> what's the word i'm looking for a shout out but uh you know, studio albums, the beta band, Hot Shots 2, and Heroes to Zeros. Um, definitely Heroes to Zeros is a really awesome album. Um, definitely uh, 12 tracks, you know, 42 minutes long. And honestly, I hear a lot of different little stuff in the, um, the beta band. Okay, you're going to hear some electronic. You're going to hear some indie rock, post rock, some trip hop. Some folktronic, you're gonna hear a whole lot of different stuff. Uh, the band was around from 1996 to 2004, which you're uh, kind of saying, um, you know, that wasn't too long for this band to be around for people to dig deep in. But uh, Steve Mason on vocals, Richard Greentree on bass, um, Robin Jones on drums on that uh, debut album, and uh, definitely going all the way through to uh, you know. To, to the very uh finale um definitely you're going to want to keep going through their work because even though it was that short time together um being um available and check out this other movie which we're going to go into some other times called it's all gone p tong because they're also involved in that movie and that's a really really awesome awesome movie and the band had lots of praise though okay if you're into radiohead the band Radiohead praised these guys. Um, the three P's is kind of where I got my introduction to them. Um, <clears throat> but really, really highly rated band. Um, really kind of, uh, you're going to get, a lot, like I said, a lot of different uh, vibes. Another good summer band, I think. Um, I think it's a band that if you're looking to, uh, to definitely dig into, uh, the best of the beta band is another great album um usually don't hype up greatest hits albums here on the show but they uh they put together a really good greatest hits album you know a a band that 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 is able to stretch genres um different genres that's what we like talking about here on the show trip hop i don't know if we've talked about that yet so it's cool to get a little bit of something different which we all like to do and we all like to dig into. But that best of the beta band, Dry the Rain, it's kind of was my introduction. Um, but as you keep going deeper and deeper, eight squares, 10 gone, 13 easy, just a really, really great album. And um, I like how it was three. I had a friend in school. Um, what it is, is it's like uh, just the way it was explained to me, um, just the way the band, how they, how they, they were kind of a little bit like tool in their own way where they're hiding in the background. They're not really big and wanting to, uh, you know, get, uh, what's the word I'm looking for big and famous, but, uh, the beta band is definitely a band that I would say, go and check out, um, give you a lot of options there. You know, you can jump right into that best of, or you can go into some of their studio albums like heroes to zeros or hot shots Two. a uh, great movie. Uh, also a name of a great album. Uh, by beta bands check that out you know now we go on to uh, a little bit more uh, chicago roots here we go on a little bit of urge overkill oh, and eddie rose from urge overkill guys good to have you here blackie's here in spirit too i know he's not with us right yeah. now but I, I can feel blackie in the atmosphere here there's no question about it it's good to have you thanks you Formed in Chicago in 1986. Wow. And uh, they broke up originally in 97, but got back together in 2004. Um, main members, Nash Cato and Eddie King Rosser, um, definitely are, um, they are uh, the real deal. Um, a lot of people, again, uh, when you bring up Urge Overkill, they're going to bring up Girl, You'll Be a Woman Soon from Tarantino's Pulp Fiction. Great song, great soundtrack. But uh, honestly... You're going to have to dig a little bit more into that. Uh, current members, Nate Arling and Adam Arling, are uh, really awesome in what they bring into the band. Um, but, uh, you know, you could go back to the Supersonic Storybook from 1991. And um, Emmeline, great song. Today is Blackie's birthday, another great song. Blackie Onassis was the original drummer for this band. Sadly passed away. Um, but uh, you you look back and you say, you know, when you lose someone like Blackie Onassis, a drummer, and you're, you know, you got to 
honor them by playing these records. Okay. You got to play these records and you got to play all of them. Okay. He passed away um, a year ago, last June, uh, 2023, June 13th. So, you know, go back to 1990s Americruiser, um, 76 ball, blast that. Um, blast Smokehouse, 349, great track. Um, produced by Bruce, uh, Bruce, Butch Vig, great producer. Uh, we like to talk about producers on the show, but 1993 saturation, um, definitely awesome. Um, kickstarting with Sister of Anna to Positive Bleeding, um, The Stalker, really great song. Check that one out. Um, Operation Kissinger is a good uh, hidden track. Um, I was very excited for the next album, Exit the Dragon. Actually, got this for Christmas in 1995. Um, the song Monopoly, uh, really cool, cool, cool. Um, song chicago tribune said it's uh kind of understated casual performances that uh, bestique a band less interested in dazzle than emotional intimacy immediacy with sturdy melodies regularly poisoned vocals and brooding lyrics great i liked it liked the album quite a lot um was produced by the butcher brothers um but uh you know as, as that was after that rock and roll submarine their next album didn't come out till 2001 2001 you know from 1995 six years i'm always excited to hear and see more urge overkill but you know when talking and when digging into doing more stuff and doing cool stuff for the uh for the show um people people always throw out their their these guys are awesome for urge overkill and Honestly, I can can't say enough for Urge Overkill. I can't say enough in their their amazingness of uh, representation of rock and roll to still be putting out albums. Um, Oi from twenty twenty two, their most recent. These guys are super cool too. Um, some of the only people when I first started out that would actually comment back if you said something positive about the band, which. Honestly, any band who's able to reach out and say, "Hey, thank you for supporting us," uh, I gotta say they're they're a pretty cool band. So um, definitely is a band that I would say take more time and listen to if it's been a while since you've listened to Urge Overkill because uh, Urge Overkill is, uh, well, they're worth listening to. Another band out of Chicago. We've been really big on the bands coming out of Chicago. Um, but, uh, you know, that saturation record, um, big, big on modern uh, rock and mainstream rock charts, music videos, uh, Geffen Records. Um, honestly, um, the cover is really cool, too, because it's a depiction of Houston, Texas, the city skyline. Band from Chicago doing uh, the Houston, Texas skinny city skyline. I think that's kind of cool. Um, you, but, uh, you know, it's 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 hard not to just want to go over the radio right now and just start blasting it here but uh, unfortunately we don't want to get in trouble by playing too long of clips so you go out there yourself and check out some urge overkill and get back to us and let us know what you are thinking on um on that you know what i'm saying let us know what you're thinking because uh we do appreciate it and please please uh Hit the like and subscribe button at the bottom. You know, I, I do appreciate that too. Uh, the uh, Sadistic Penguin Studios here at the YouTube is just really awesome with all of the, the hard work that we are, are putting out. So thank you. Thank you so much for joining in and, and listening to this episode. Um, Gary Clark Jr., um, again, another artist who's just spitting out constantly awesome work. Um, new album, JPEG Raw, uh, came out this past March 2024. Um, I like him, too, because he mixes everything. He mixes music, jazz, rock, R&B, hip-hop, blues. He doesn't stick to one genre, and you get a little bit of all of that in his music. Um, his most recent album here, again, um, described as an ever-expanding creative palette. And that's honestly everything I've ever heard from him is uh, exactly what that is. He's always stretching palettes and stretching the guitar and making it do things that you uh, don't usually hear so often. Um me personally, Black and Blue from 2012 is kind of where I got my introduction. Um, he got two Grammy nominations for it. Uh, Best Hard Rock Song for Ain't Messing Around. If you haven't heard that in a long time, um, go and check that out. Or the lead track, Back in Black and Blue. I like it because it's uh, got a really cool R&B feel. Bright Lights is heavy. Heavy, heavy guitar uh, business going on there. But uh, 
check it out. Um, check out Gary Clark Jr. I um, wanted to showcase a little bit uh, Gary because we haven't really brought him up too much on the show. And he definitely needs to be brought up. He definitely needs to be respected for his um, awesome, awesome, awesome talents. You know, in that first album, again, mixing everything up from Chuck Berry-esque uh, rock and roll. You got blues. You got just a whole, whole different different um, vibes. A lot of people love it. Okay, he's jam with a lot of good greats on the stage, um, respected among other musicians. Uh never too late to check out Gary Clark Jr. Really, really awesome. Um, tonight, 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 what do we have here tonight, folks, on the producer's chair? We have one. Um, Matt Wallace is uh, tonight's uh, record producer. We're going to get into who Matt Wallace is in a second, but I uh, got a little bit of a clip here uh, pulled up for you guys. Red Hot Chili Peppers like, yeah, well, I didn't make it this year. Uh, whatever. And, and then I turned the page. It was like, number one. Faith No More, and I, I was like, what? Yes, the producer of Faith No More, okay? The real thing, okay? Produced Epic. He also produced Angel Dust. Uh, love that album. Kerrang! named it the most influential album of all time. Um, he co-mixed their album Soul Invictus. Uh, definitely another artist who, for me, when I started thinking of uh, producers, he was somebody who came to mind quickly because I remember looking at those Faith No More albums. Angel Dust was my very first uh, album in which I purchased and seeing his name on it. Um, and then you see that, you know, you go to a lot of other stuff that he did. You know, he was involved with, you go from Faith No More to Maroon 5. Okay, you're involved with H2O, Hardcore Band Go. Pretty, 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 pretty cool. Um, always stretching the boundaries again. Um, the doors open up, you know. After you're doing something like Faith No More and you win an award, which is what he was stating there before, a lot of people start calling and want to work with you. R.E.M. did the song Revolution with him. Pretty awesome. Um, you know, you're, you're, you're just always looking and... Um, always looking for uh different things um imperial team um definitely a band he was also a little bit involved with uh the song what is not to love um definitely involved with uh just a lot a lot a lot a lot different stuff going through his whole thing sugar called mushroom head um josh kelly um fight star corn oar um ludo um just pepper you go on forever. Um, train. I don't want to get involved with Train, but uh, unfortunately he did. But go back and check out those Faith No More albums that I mentioned. Angel Dust. Um, check out The Real Thing. Really going to be impressed with his style of producing. Always going to be impressed with his work ethic behind the board. So check that out. I uh, really appreciate you giving me some time to just talk a little bit about uh, awesome producers. Um, you know, giving me the opportunity earlier to, to just talk about coolness like we did tonight. Um, before we head out here, uh, I got a little bit of a question um, that was thrown my way and is uh, pretty much going to be a little bit of um, what do you think about going to concerts? in the summer but they're indoors especially when it gets to like 89 90 degrees so when you walk out the door see i like the the winter concerts when you walk outside after being indoors and you get that cold feeling but what about that you're really hot after being at a place like an indoor venue like the riviera the aragon ballroom it's 89 degrees outside it was super super hot inside uh how you like that feeling walking out and getting that like sweat to sweat type of feeling um i've done it lots and lots and lots of times um don't know if i enjoy it too much now um back when you're younger you're just like wow uh, i will keep going and i'll keep rocking out I don't care how hot how hot it gets or how hot it doesn't get but uh definitely something that uh, was posed to me um honestly you know, if you're outside already and it's hot and it's inside and it's hot and it's an awesome band, you're going to go see them anywhere. I'm going to say don't stop seeing someone because they're not playing outdoors. Don't stop going because they're playing indoors. Check it all out. Um, thank you so much, everyone out there for joining me tonight. I really, really, really appreciate it. 
Um, the hookup on music is something that I am extremely passionate about, just like everything else that is popping up on the uh, Sadistic Penguin Studios YouTube channel. Uh, check that out. We just dropped a recent uh, late 90s uh, heaviness um smorgasbord check that out also check out at the show this sunday at uh 2 p.m we're going to be going through some summer blockbusters um also uh check out all the other cool things on the sadistic penguin studios youtube channel mad max uh furiosa review really awesome um check out summer school great 80s classic vhs uh, check that out. Uh, also, go to uh, check out some really cool articles if you're looking for different blogs to uh, read. My main man, Yumper, and amazing partner of At The Show has put some really good stuff together there. And uh, read my most recent one about uh, Metallica's Load. You go through that album and see uh, how that holds up after all these years. So uh, check that all out. And uh, next week, we're definitely going to be back. Because uh, where else are we going to go? Because this is where we love to come, love to talk tunes with you guys. Because I'm Tune. That's what it's called. Yeah, just say, Tune, get in here. All right, every folks. Um, thank you for being here. Thank you for joining me. It was episode 72, which was a blast. And uh, go and check out some of those bands I mentioned. Check out the Babe Report. Check out that uh, Edwin Collins, Girl Like You. Check out Beta Band, Urge Overkill, Gary Clark Jr., um, so many Adrian Below, Matt Wallace produced stuff, all the great stuff that we talked about tonight. Thank you so much for joining me, and we will definitely, definitely, definitely see you again soon. <laughs>